Hello, my name is Grant Haddon, and I am the administrator of Cool Trains in Montreal. I just uh, wanted to share with you a design that I have for a model railroad. This is a very small model railroad, but it has a lot of track. Not too much track, nothing to overpower it, but just enough to keep things interesting and to keep things pretty inexpensive. Uh, my big thing here is to show some of the buildings that I've built, the sign philosophy behind it, and the philosophy of the railroad itself. So, this is not a very large one. This is small, and it's in the planning stages. Um, what I will do eventually is put it onto some kind of a CAD program so that I get an exact uh, idea of what I want to do. I always suggest this step before actually building something. However, in this case, I have actually built the buildings already. So it is easier if you have the buildings already done to just place them around. But if you haven't built anything yet and you want to build something, I would suggest getting um, a model railroad or just a CAD program in general. There's probably a lot of the free ones now. I used AutoCAD for years. AutoCAD is great because you can basically do what I just did here except do it in digital form where you can just take the building or you just draw the footprint of the building by the dimensions given to you on the box of the kit or maybe if you're scratch building or kit bashing like me you might want to decide what you want to build first and then just do a footprint of it and then you make it into a block and this is a technique that many AutoCAD uh, designers use to block their um, drawing and then they insert it somewhere and then they can change the angle, move it around and uh, you're not moving one piece at a time, you're moving an entire building essentially. So it's doing what I just did here except in a digital form and I can do that eventually. Um, since I already have it built, what I can do is show you here the, the kits that I have built and the track layout. So this particular layout which will be a layout can fit perfectly into a larger layout at a greater at a later time this this is actually a 20 inch by a 20, 20 inch uh, wide by 79 inches long now that's an odd dimension but you can just make it 80 inches and that would fit perfectly so um, and the idea here is again to get a lot of buildings in that I've built so you put them, uh, I, I want to do something with them, obviously, and I like building buildings. And I enjoy some aspects of urban planning, so this is my uh, urban planning as well. And I want to keep things inexpensive, so I'm using the track that I have. I do have to buy one, one more switch. All these other switches I had bought at some point and were not using. So I put this track plan in mind trying to use what I have so everything here is gonna fit properly I've tested it as far as what you see here so I know that my layout is feasible the, the tracks aren't the track radiuses aren't gonna be too crazy uh, the switches are gonna work uh, in terms of the trains are gonna be able to navigate them properly and I've managed to squeeze in as many buildings as I can possibly make to make this industrial area. And personally, I like urban areas and I don't see it done enough, maybe. And I'm also cheap. I don't like making trees. So it's a good way of getting out of that. So here what I have is a quick rundown of my buildings. Now this is a kit bash. This is a warehouse. This is a Pike Stuff um, building warehouse. And... The brick part of it is actually from a DPM kit, and what I suggest is you buy several of these kits, and what I did is I just cannibalized the leftovers from several of those kits and made this office area. And if you notice, the reasoning behind this building is here is it's big, yes, but it has a kind of wedge quality to it, so that the track, it, it can be, so that there's, there's some space for it. So if you notice what I did is the tracks are all on an angle. This is about a 30 degree angle. And uh, this building was designed to be on a 30 degree angle so that it, the bulk of it would be out of the way. So 
this is how it was done. Now this building here, this little Walters building, I intentionally built it on a 30 degree angle knowing that I, at some point I would want to use it this way. I didn't know exactly how when I built it, but I just knew it would look cool in some kind of context. And I think I found a way to do it. So this is going to be a roadway that's going between these buildings. And what I want to do with this basically is just have this as an underpass. So the road would actually go down a hill underneath these tracks and then up a hill again. And the reasoning I want to do this is because on this road, if you'll notice, there's no actual front doors of any buildings. The buildings themselves are just kind of like the back. There's only one over here that has actually a front to it. This one has a front you can't see too well. But anyway, the point is, what I don't want is to have train cars just crossing tra uh, roads all the time. This is bad design. You see it in urban areas where they're too cheap to build, you know, grade separation. And <laughs> if I'm trying to do an urban landscape, what I want to do ideally is have one way for people to get around without being disturbed by the trains. So in my second road here, this one can be a level crossing. It's older, you can see that the building is more in an industrial area in terms of, you know, it's been wedged between two uh, a grain silo and this, uh, this um, mill building. So this is kind of inspired by Mill Street in Montreal where you have this, uh, the street actually goes underneath like this conveyor system that's covered. So this is what this is in a small sense. So, And this building is not too difficult to make actually. It's just the, the Walters Mill building and again some DPM kit that I bashed up against it. And uh, these, these little um, silos come from a Helgen kit. And on top of this is a micro-engineering kind of part of a building. These things all can be bought separately, and I got them pretty cheap at the time. And when I built them, you know, I had them lying around. That's why when you have a lot of kits, it's easy to kit build. So, And uh, here we go a little bit further. So here another DPM kit. This is two together. This will eventually be a subway building. So what I have here is two of those DPM kits that are a kind of apartment building or whatever smashed together. This is another Walters building. It's the, uh, I forget exactly which one they call it. The furniture company, that's right. So that's the furniture company. And this here is my scratch-built fire station. Uh, this is just pieces of um, probably pike stuff. A pike stuff garage and some actually scratch built stuff just some styrene anyway it was a small little project this is one of my first kit bashes it's small and uh, it's just basically a Walters kit with um, a DPM garage at the end uh, further off what I have here is the end of the tracks and this is the Walters um, modular design. What I did is I bunch of, bought a bunch of them kind of trying to emulate uh, a Rosemount area kind of inspired warehouse. If you know anything about Montreal I should post a picture of the building. It's an interesting building, much bigger, much more angular this one is just a, you know, rectangular something to fit. Here's another, just a regular basic DPM kit that I bought, and it's going to fit there on a, in a kind of wedge way. And uh, here we are, basically all of the buildings. I was able to fit in as many buildings as I could. This is the idea, to show off the buildings that I built and put them in a context that makes sense. So, and... This layout is, it's small, but it, like I said, it could be expanded upon very easily. Uh, it's 20 inches wide, so the eventual way it will probably be incorporated is to add an extra 4 inches for a main line and then connect it up uh, from one of these, either of these ends so that you have an industrial area 
uh, connecting to a main trunk line. And there's lots of space in here to put cars, move cars around. Um, you are also not going to be bored here because uh, some of these industries requires you to move cars to get into it. So these two industries here, to get into here, you're going to have to go through here and you're going to have to move cars around. But there is ample space to move the cars. So you can do it just with, you know, what's here. You don't need extra add-ons. You won't be able to turn stuff, I think. Um, that's the only one thing is I won't have a runaround track. But I may incorporate a runaround run track eventually anyway. I mean, it'd be very easily done if I just bought a couple more switches to put a runaround track. And that I might actually do because that would probably make more sense. But in the meantime, this is the economy version of my layout. And this is what I'm planning to do in the new year. And I just wanted to give everybody a sense of this, and you can emulate this at home. I'd like to see some other interesting plans. But uh, there are lots of different plans on the internet, and uh, this is the one that I came up with with this space. So I'd like to thank you for looking at it, and uh, have a good day. Bye.